Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do something that's pretty interesting. Maybe a little swamp with some trees with the, the moss hanging down. And of course, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to leave a like and a comment for future painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today with our two inch brush and some of our yellow, maybe a little bit of white. Throw those together and just kind of get a nice golden color. All right, let's see, maybe right up here. I'm going to stick in a little bit of yellow. Now, don't want to go too much with this yellow because obviously it just gets to where it looks kind of weird if you put too, too bright of a yellow in here. And I'm not looking for like a really intense sunset today. This is more just to some fun color in the sky. That's about it. So there you go. Let's go into a little bit of red and just sort of work out. Not much red. <laughs> There's a little green that actually when Look, see, okay. I got a little green into that and I just blend it right in. It didn't make any difference at all. Learn to be free when you paint. Stuff like that is going to happen, but don't let it bother you. It's not going to be a big deal. There. See, it just blended right away. All gone. Next, I'll load up our filbert brush with some yellow and white. And I've, as you can see, I've already threw just a little bit of light gray, a little bit of red and blue in here. And sort of just sets me up for, for this step. I'm going to come in and rub in our little, little tiny extra clouds. Now, obviously you could kind of just leave it the way it is. And maybe if you're learning, you're just now starting out, maybe this is the thing to do, just sort of leave it where it is. Because you can just take the big brush and make, you know, big effects and then call it good. That's fine. But what I want to do today in my painting, I want to bring it one step further by going in with a small brush and refining the shapes that I have down. So I want to take some of this yellow we blocked in and I want to move it over here into the gray, which is really just a mix of red, blue, and white. And see that? I can get some beautiful little things. Little clouds that float in like this. Nice. That, that just to me makes that so much, so much nicer. So it's totally up to whatever you want to do. You sort of figure out where you want to take your painting and, and that's just great. <laughs> you have fun with it. That's all that I really care about is you guys are learning a little something and having a lot of fun while you do it. Now we'll load up our filbert brush with a very soft green color. And maybe right in here somewhere, we could just gonna have to pick out a spot, maybe right about here. I'm going to begin to shape little trees. There. And you can, you can sort of adjust these around and make them whatever you need them to be. What I mean is, it didn't make any difference how low or high you put your sky here. You want these trees just about a third of the way up. So I'm going to cover up actually a couple inches here of my sky, well, about an inch here. So, there you go. And the point is, don't let your sky don't let your sky make you choose where you're going to put your trees. It does not matter. If you need to stop and fill your sky in a little bit more, you can. There. Nice and soft. I love it. Now we'll take our little detail brush and load it up with some yellow, some green, white, and <laughs> right up here. We'll just Oh yeah, this is nice and subtle. We'll just begin to shape a couple of little highlights. Now, you could do this with a filbert. However, it may look a little too close. I need small, small branches out here. So I feel like the detail brush is really the best for this little, for this little tree back here. There, see that? Just very, very blurry. No hard edges, no tapping, blurry. It'll give you a distant look that way. Nice. Sunlight's coming across like this today. Maybe this little guy out here gets just a bit. You can even put in the darks with this if you want to pop in a couple darks or some details. You can do that too. There. A lot of this is going to be shown here in the final painting, so spend some time on these trees and adjust the greens. Change, change add a little extra green, add some blue, whatever, to the mix to make it more interesting. Next, I'll take our filbert brush here and simply drop in a, a little bit of water. Now, what I'm doing is I'm simply matching the top of the painting 
to the bottom. So see that purple in the sky? I just put that same old purple right down here to create some water. Very simple, not, not difficult. It just takes a little bit of thinking and, and that's about it. There. I want you to put this on really nice and dry. The top of the canvas, the sky area, was coated with a little bit of clear gel and white. And the bottom here, I did not coat with the clear gel and white. The reason is I want this to be super smooth, but down here I may, may want a little more texture, I may want a little more details, like well, maybe some trees and you know things like that in the water, reflections, so there's the reason. And of course that clear gel and white is just amazing for for letting things blend, but I want a little more control down here, so that's the reason. All that's available on my website, all the clear gel and all the paints that I'm using, so you can use exactly what I'm using. It makes life a lot easier. There. Back here, let's throw some trees in. So I got my, let me show you my palette. See, I've just been working from the same color, sort of mixing on top of each other. So here, darken up uh, the green a little, the yellow and green. Maybe right down here. Just start to put in a bit of a reflection. Don't need a whole lot. Nice. Maybe this is water, maybe it's land. Hard to say back right in this area. These are going to be like some big dirt areas. Not rocks, but actually dirt with grass on top. There. <laughs> this is fun. Maybe these are the trees, so we'll sort of get us a little dark in there. Now, still using the filbert brush here, I'm going to, I'm going to work on these little tiny boulders, not really boulders, but they're like, they look like boulders. They're little pieces of land that kind of are mounded up a little. And I'm sure this is because of the water, you know, rising and, and going down when it rains. I don't know, something like that. There's usually reasons for stuff. You can usually figure out reasons for things to be in your painting. The real reason these things are in here is just to break up the, the very flat area. And Honestly, the swamps do seem to be flat. I've been looking at a lot of pictures of them because I don't live near one. And they seem to be very flat and definitely covered in a lot of water, but there were land areas. And I do wanna, wanna show both the land areas and the water areas. So that's kind of my, my way to balance out the painting. If you wanna go just straight water and trees, go for it, why not? We can all do our own little spin on things. So that's kind of cool. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with this painting. We don't usually, don't usually do these kind of scenes together. So get in touch with me and, and let me see what you paint. I can't wait. I know you guys just uh, honestly, like the day after I post these videos, I see a whole bunch of on Facebook and email, a whole bunch of you guys are doing them. And that's so exciting. It's fun for me to see what you guys do with them. Really cool. So if you want to send me a picture, I'd love to see it. Now I'm going to brush in with just a little bit of brown on the filbert, uh, a nice little tree up here. I quickly sketched it in, just to the left and the right side, and now I'm filling it in. The reason I wanted to sketch was it's pretty easy to get the dimensions correct when you sketch, but if you go to just layer on the paint right away, and I do that a lot of times, but especially in this case, if you do it right away, you might get the tree too big or a goofy shape, who knows? So just very quickly, and you can see it's kind of rough. I just figured out where I wanted my limbs and all that. The main problem here is there's a beautiful, beautiful little sunset back there, or sunrise or whatever that is. And it could be very easily contaminated with brown, so I didn't want to go too, too far. It'd be very difficult to cover it up. There we go. And make sure your tree has a nice little taper to it. Not too big, but not too small. We're gonna have another one over there somewhere, I think. It is if I don't change my mind, but sometimes I do. You know, that ever happens every once in a while, doesn't it? There, cool. And let's see, let's, let's get a, a little bit of, well, let's get a little bit of blue and brown, black, all these nice colors here. And some yellow, let's see what this does for us. Wipe the extra paint out on a paper towel and yeah, let's just begin putting on some very loose little leaves. There. And I'm gonna kinda go for like a rounded tree effect here. And we can throw the moss on later. The moss is pretty simple. I'm just gonna simply, let me show you what I'm gonna do. Pull down, especially with this little filbert because it's kinda grainy, it's scratchy. It's got a lot of rough spots, so you get these lines, 
almost like a rake brush would give you, except not symmetrical, which is kind of a bonus. There. Nice. Now we'll take our little detail brush here and simply drop in a little bit of moss or shallow grass growing on the on the little lake or river or whatever. I guess this isn't really a river, is it? <laughs> well, growing on the water. This is probably moss, I guess. So there we go. All I know is just about all the swamp pictures I saw had it and it looks really cool. So let's throw it in. Just a few brush strokes is all it takes. There. Now, there's also a lot of sand around this area as well, or there could be. So let's throw that in. Just here and there where you think it would fit and where you think it would make the painting look a little better. Throw it in. Simple little tan color. See that? Just little pockets of sand. This river or the water must not be very deep here. There. Next, I'll just carefully drop in a couple of little ripples here. And you can actually pull this detail brush out flat, chisel it up. And it really does come to a nice little chisel edge. It's rounded. It's a round brush, but it does come to a little bit of a chisel. So it works well for this too. And, and it's so soft. You can layer over all this wet reflection and without having any problems. Just reload every, every couple of ripples. You should reload. Almost no pressure. Just barely let those bristles touch down. There. Next with our liner brush, I'm going to drop in several, several little stems to some flowers up here. Now, as you probably noticed, I just slammed in a bunch of color here, wasn't worried at all about it. And now this is when I'm going to stop and figure out exactly where I want my little flowers. This is going to be a lot of, a lot of leaves, a lot of stems. So actually we're not too worried about these because most of these are going to be covered. So I'm just going to think about a few little tall ones that come right out. The rest I'm not worried about. Make sure you have your, the paint really nice and thin on your brush or this isn't going to work too well. Okay. That's probably enough. Now with our filbert brush, I'm going to quickly drop in a couple of leaves to maybe this large tree. And then I think this is like a little sapling or bush or something down here. We'll put a, a leaf or two on that one as well. Maybe. Yeah, we'll just start right here. And I'm going to go fairly slowly just because I don't want to overdo it. Man, it's easy to overdo stuff like this. So I want you guys to just paint a few leaves and step back to about six feet, come back and paint a couple more leaves. That will save you so much time because you won't be trying to get this background back, which would be quite difficult. So take it easy there. Don't cover up everything, but this does, you know, it just creates another layer because this background is fairly soft. So to have this contrast is pretty nice there. Oh yeah. Let's overlap that trunk. We haven't put highlights on it yet, but that's fine. Now with our little, detail brush here. I'm going to drop in some highlight to a little bird here. I quickly just sketched out the outline, filled it in with a little gray. Very simple. And now I just going to throw a little light on the back like that. Now, if you're not familiar with birds and I'm not, I would suggest looking at a reference of some kind. Just a simple photo of a, a little bird that lives in a swamp works. Good. Fun. All right. Always fun to do stuff that you don't normally do. That's the wing right there. That's the back and then the tail. Not too much color. It's mostly just like a white bird. There. Now the last thing we want to do here is just drop a small amount of highlight on this big tree. And I really don't want a whole lot simply because it might distract from the rest of the painting. I don't want the corners to be too bright. So there, not too much, but I also wouldn't want to go just, just leave it black because just to leave it dark would, would make it seem flat and I don't want flat either. So 
a little bit of highlight is exactly what we want here. There, leave a lot of bark texture because this one's close in the foreground. There, even darker. Throw some more brown into it as you come down. Nice. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.